by the synchronous motor. It's a type of AC induction motor, or sorry, AC electric motor. It starts like an induction motor where you have the rotating magnetic field. I'm not gonna go into huge detail here, but when the winding is created, it creates this rotating three-phase magnetic field. It's a basis for every electric motor. And in that basis, what happens is that rotating magnetic field, the lines of magnetic flux cut through the rotor bars, this is just a squirrel cage, it induces current and it causes that cage to rotate. That's the basis for an induction motor, how it operates. Induction motor being barred, they have a, a barred aluminum or copper alloy. Um, synchronous motor is kind of unique because it has both. So once you're up to close to synchronous speed and it starts like an induction motor, we apply DC to the slip through the slip rings to the rotor and we energize it. And what ends up happening is it pulls it into synchronism. So what you see here is a synchronous pull pieces. And what's happening is it got energized and it pulled the rotor into sync. So what do I mean by that? Well, a synchronous motor operates at synchronous frequency or operates at synchronous RPM. An induction motor has slip. An induction motor is being pulled along by the magnetic field of the stator. So that's the difference. So when the synchronous motor starts, it's starting with slip, then you energize the DC or the rotor, and then it pulls it into synchronism. Synchronous motors, I always thought this was kind of cool. They operate at constant speed, independent of load. You can load them more heavily and the speed stays locked in. As long as you're keeping your excitation proper and you're keeping within the design parameters of the torque and so on. Uh, synchronous motors, the unique part about them is that they produce reactive power. We're gonna talk about this a little bit. Uh, synchronous motors are used like power factor correction capacitors. As you excite the rotor, you can create and supply reactive power. And then, as I had said earlier, induction motors, I didn't say this yet, but induction motors are, when, they're, when they have their rating of power factor, that's a lagging power factor because induction motors consume reactive power. Synchronous motors either stay at unity or create reactive power. So power triangle, I'm not gonna go into this too much, but when the power company produces power, they're producing the total KVA that's coming across the transmission lines. That power then goes to a substation at a plant or whatever, gets stepped down to feed a motor or lighting or whatever. What happens is at that point, you have devices that are consuming different parts of that power. So reactive power is kind of like wasted energy, kind of like beer. We like to skim off the top of the beer because that's a waste. We want to fill it all the way to the top. So the total KVA still has to be supplied, but there's wasted power for, for a way of presenting it. So as we increase the field current, we increase the power factor to leading, which creates reactive power. So what ends up happening is the motor then actually becomes a generator. It's a motor, but it's a reactive generator. It's feeding reactive power back to the system. So quite simply, induction motor, lagging power factor, it uses reactive power. Synchronous motor is either at unity or it's creating reactive power and it's a leading power factor. So synchronous motor parts, the rotor, it's similar to all motors as a rotor, a stator, bearing system, and so on. What's unique to the synchronous motor is the rotating fields or those field coils. And in those field coils, they have damper bars or amortissier for a bigger word. But essentially what they are is a squirrel cage winding like an induction. So the pole pieces are made of laminations. They're put together, they're either riveted or they're bolted together. And then the pole tip or the pole face, they have the uh, squirrel cage rotor bars that go through. But wrapped around the pole is the actual DC coil that creates that synchronism. And then when they're tied together, this would be the typical synchronous where you have the shorting ring that continues all the way around the periphery, tying all those together, just like an induction motor.